Do you know how to bottle fresh, delicious tomatoes? Hi, I'm Kylene. And I'm Jonathan, and we are the Provident Preppers. We just got done bottling some fresh tomatoes from our garden. Bottling whole tomatoes in their own juice is an incredibly easy way to preserve the harvest. We will be enjoying these tomatoes all winter long in soups, stews, and chilies. And the best thing about these tomatoes is that they are shelf stable, which means that they require no refrigeration and no freezing. In this quick video, we will show you just how easy it is to bottle tomatoes and process them in a water bath canner. Stay tuned. In this video, we will show you how you too can have bottles of whole tomatoes like these in your pantry. One thing that is really cool about bottling whole tomatoes in their own juice is that it just requires very basic ingredients, tomatoes, salt, and lemon juice, and no special equipment. We also make tomato juice, but you have to have a juicer, and sometimes that can get a little bit more complicated. But bottling whole tomatoes is incredibly simple. We start with these gorgeous, organic, vine-ripened tomatoes from our own garden. And this is a fun way to use cherry tomatoes. Most of the time we just juice our excess cherry tomatoes, but as you can see in that little jar on the left-hand side, the different colors are really pretty in the jar and they're just kind of a novelty when you use them in a recipe. As with anything, we always want to start by making sure that we have a clean tomato. So rinse your tomatoes really well. This year we got a new pasta pot and that turned out to be an amazing tool. Normally we would put the tomatoes into a pot of boiling water and then watch for the skins to split and then scoop them out with a spoon. But this was just such an easy way to dip them in the boiling water and then pull them back out. You know the tomatoes are ready to come out of the boiling water when the skins start to split. Now our goal is not to cook the tomatoes, so we just want to pull them out and that normally takes a minute to a minute and a half in boiling water. Once scalded, these tomatoes are poured into this bowl and left to cool just long enough so that we can handle them. And if these tomatoes are done right, those peels just slide right off. It's usually my job to take these tomatoes and put them in the jars. So I've got my little routine set up and I have to have lots of towels. This is a very juicy, messy process. So I've got lots of little towels in front of me and the scalded tomatoes are on the right and I just slip the skin into a compost bowl that I have in the center and then I put the tomato in the jar. And I just continue this process until all the tomatoes are done. We really try not to waste anything. Some people will take the skins and dry them and then turn them into a tomato powder. But for me, I prefer to use them as chicken feed and have the chickens turn them into some wonderful compost to grow tomatoes again. Once I have the tomatoes in the bottle, I squish them down with my fingers because I'm trying to get any air bubbles in there out. And sometimes it's easy to take a butter knife and just kind of put it along the edges inside and just really try and get rid of any air that's in there. Make sure that you leave plenty of head space for the lemon juice because you're going to need to add two tablespoons of lemon juice to each quart of tomatoes to make sure that the acid level is high enough. And then we add one teaspoon of canning salt. It's a good idea to go ahead and use canning salt and not regular salts because other salts, some of the additives can be cloudy and make your final product not as appealing. With all the ingredients in the jar, we then clean the rim so that the lid will seal tightly. While we're getting the tomatoes in the jars, we have our lids just simmering on the stove so that the gaskets are nice and pliable. We are then ready to put the hot lids on the jars and screw the rings on hand tight. An important step to make these shelf stable is to process them in a hot water bath. This is our canner and it's designed for this process. Because our water here is somewhat hard, we like to add a splash of vinegar just to keep the hard water scale off the bottles. The time that it takes to process these tomatoes depends on your elevation. If you go to the National Center for Home Food Preservation, they have all the information to help you get this done safely. Once the boiling bath is done, we carefully remove the hot jars. We like to put them out on our picnic table just to let them air cool and start sealing. 
But then once they're cool, we bring them in the house and they have to sit on the kitchen counter for 24 hours and we look at the beautiful job that we did creating this wonderful food. But really what we do is we wanna make sure that all those jars have sealed before they are tucked away in the basement storeroom. Once they are all cool, I will wash them and I label them and date them and then they are tucked away in our cool storeroom. And they're shelf stable for at least a year. Quite frankly, we have tomatoes that we use that are four or five years old that still are really good. But um, ideally, you would rotate through them every year. And why do we do this? Why do we go through this work? Because tomatoes in our food storage program are a foundational staple item. And there's no way that I can make John's favorite chili without my tomatoes. And once again, in my pinto bean chicken chili, I've got to have my bottled tomatoes. Our food storage is so much better because of this one simple ingredient from our garden. As is usually the case, when the first frost comes, we still have a lot of green tomatoes on the vine. All of these get harvested and put in our outbuilding, covered with a sheet, until they ripen. As these ripen, we either eat them fresh, or when we've got enough that are ripe at the same time, we'll bottle another batch. We are so excited to share with you some of the really fun things that we've been doing in our efforts to become more self-reliant. And this video was one of those. Another video that might interest you is killer frost protection. When you're growing tomatoes, you've got issues with the early frost and the late frost. And sometimes adding that little bit of extra protection can mean all the difference in your harvest. And we have been experimenting with growing food indoors. I have this amazing indoor garden. So if you'd like to see what we're doing, check out the video, Fresh Greens Every Day for Pennies. And then as you are working to become more self-reliant, perhaps you'd like to watch the video, Best Survival Crops. In this video, we go through the top crops that we recommend you grow if you are growing a survival garden and your family will depend on the foods that you are able to produce. And finally, shelf-stable pineapple. We did something new this year. We got a bunch of fresh pineapples after a luau, and instead of freezing them like we normally would, we made them shelf-stable in bottles. Check them out. Okay, so as you can see, it was a bit messy, but it was very easy. And now we want to give a quick shout out to our friends at Rush Order Teas who provided us with our new aprons. Cool, we like them very much, thank you. And now for the question of the day. What is your favorite way to preserve tomatoes from your garden? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.